Tonight on Denver 7 News at 6. The pints have flown. Pubs go green for the first time in two years. It's refreshing to be back out. Um, it kind of makes life seem a little more normal. The Nuggets and Avs take a step toward allowing fans. What you won't be allowed to do at Rockies games this season. Plus, Jacqueline Allen investigates a fridge collapse. I feel like Samsung needs to step up and take care of their customers. And we go 360 on whether the governor bit off more than he could chew when he declared Saturday meet out day. Our social media kind of blew up on this. Good evening, everybody. So happy to have you here on St. Patrick's Day. I'm Shannon Ogden. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrew Trujillo. This can't and won't be the day of revelry. It once was, but it's still way better than last year, right? Dining rooms are open. Last call doesn't come until late, and pubs are seeing green in more ways than one. Like many a patron, Denver 7's Gary Broad has been at the bars since this morning. And knowing Gary, he'll be out later tonight as well. Just kidding. Uh, so, Gary, uh, an important night, really, for Irish bars and restaurants around here. Yeah, it really is. I mean, this is a monster day for any Irish bar. And as you take a look behind me, this is what St. Patrick's Day socially distanced looks like. Tables blocked off, very limited seating at the bar when normally it would be shoulder to shoulder. Now here at the Irish Rover, I talked to the owner. I asked him, you know, what are the expectations for how much you possibly could make based on the last couple of years? He says, I have no expectations whatsoever. He says, whatever I make, it'll be more than last year. It may not look like your traditional St. Patrick's Day, but if you close your eyes, it sounds like the tradition is making its way back. Well, it's definitely different from years in the past. Yeah. Longtime customer Tom Gibbs continued his own tradition this morning. For 15 years, he's been the first patron to walk through the doors of the Irish Rover on St. Patrick's Day. And somebody said it opened at 10, so we got here at 10. And it opened at 11. St. Patty's Day is not going to be the same, but yet yeah, we're still going to go for a point or two. Alan O'Gorman owns the Irish Rover. Like all in the food industry, this year has not been easy. He credits his loyal customers for giving him business, not just on this holiday, but throughout the pandemic. We've been very fortunate, we've been very humble to see the support that we've gotten. Any other year, the bar is filled with customers, typically shoulder to shoulder, waiting for their next drink. But with only 50% capacity allowed, pubs like the Irish Rover and Irish Snug have to make some changes. You know, no large crowds, no crowding around the bar, anything like that. The Irish Rover eliminated some tables inside, relying on their rooftop seating to turn a profit. I'm glad these guys have survived, but obviously, uh, were there no rules, these guys would be making a killing today, and they're not. And for these two, St. Patrick's Day means more than grabbing a pint. It symbolizes hope. Absolutely, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Thanks for coming in, guys. And while, as you saw earlier, it's not crowded inside the barroom, because of 50% capacity, you're looking at a very long, pretty typical St. Patrick's Day line. So this is really the only thing that's pretty standard about today. Uh, Shannon, and you did say, I've been here for a while. This is my favorite day of the year. So we always talk about shopping local, eating local, drinking local. Like I said, favorite day of the year. That's what I plan on doing in just a few minutes. Reporting live here in Denver, Gary Bro. Denver 7. Happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> I guess we'll be able to spot Gary pretty easily wow. out there. Listen, if you do go out and you have a green beer or two tonight, we do hope you will do so responsibly. We're not just talking about catching an Uber instead of driving home. Dr. Fauci testified to Congress today the virus has not gone away and it won't anytime soon. We are still in the middle of a serious outbreak. We plateaued at around 50,000 cases a day, an unacceptably high level. My concern is that we prematurely pull back and don't give the vaccines time to continue to protect the country. 626 cases of the virus and one death were confirmed in Colorado today and 380 people are in the hospital. The state is confirming outbreaks of coronavirus within Breckenridge employee housing, a Catholic church in Lakewood and an adult hockey league in Denver. Outbreaks have declined sharply at nursing homes and assisted living facilities, a sign the vaccine is doing its job. Aurora High School students will spend more time in the classroom after spring break. APS says some will attend in person in the morning and then learn remotely for the rest of the day, and then the others will do the opposite. And Cronky Sports is requesting the state allow fans at Avalanche and Nuggets games. Now, no specifics were provided just yet. Ball Arena has a maximum capacity of 20,000 people. 
And you're going to have to actually get up out of your seat if you want a hot dog or a beer at Coors Field this season. The state's not going to allow vendors to go up and down the stands during games. And perhaps more importantly, there will be no in-game appearances from Dinger, and players are discouraged from throwing balls to the fans. The clubhouse restaurants will be open. People have been complaining about several models of Samsung refrigerators for years now, and you might think Samsung would have fixed the problem by now, or at least acted like they were going to, and you'd be wrong. Contact Denver 7 consumer investigator Jacqueline Allen has the story. The ice maker is off to the side here. Six months after Tanya Petsley bought her $2,500 Samsung refrigerator. As you can see, it built up a lot of extra ice within there. The ice maker broke for the first time. How many times have you had to call repair people? So we've called repair people um, three plus times. Have they fixed the problem? They've not fixed the problem. Defrosting her fridge with a hair dryer every week, the Fort Collins mom thought she was alone. But a class action lawsuit has been in the works since 2017, reporting the same defects, leaking, over-freezing, temperature control problems. And that's when I started to figure out that it wasn't just me that got a lemon, and that's why I reached out to you. It had completely frozen over. It was a solid block of ice. Contact Denver 7 has heard from dozens of Samsung owners on social media. We've had it fixed three times, and I need to call them back out again. It now, a Facebook group calling for a Samsung refrigerator recall has more than 41,000 members. It's a defect. Group moderator Tom O'Shea recommends recording everything, complaining to the New Jersey Better Business Bureau, and fighting for a refund. I got my money two years ago. I hate seeing people being bullied by a company like this. In a statement to Contact Denver 7, Samsung writes, we stand behind all of our products, including our refrigerators, and want to ensure our customers are completely satisfied. In reference to Tanya writing, upon arrival, the technician determined Ms. Petsley had unfortunately damaged the unit beyond repair. As a result, the technician was unable to service the unit. Voicemail from the repair shop. Tanya says she has proof that's not true. The technician never arrived, only looked at photos and left a voicemail. It does look like that is not repairable. Posts on social media show some are getting partial refunds from Samsung. The company says call their 1-800 number. But for those frozen out, a new fridge may be the only way to keep their cool. I think Samsung needs to stand behind their products and admit that they should have recalled this a long time ago. For Contact Denver 7, I'm Jacqueline Allen. And if you enjoyed that story, you're in luck because tonight is a Jacqueline Allen double feature. The second story involves Lisa Angelo, a woman charged $5,700 for a latte she purchased at the Gaylord Rockies Hotel. That was three months ago. Because I'm so stressed at this point, I feel like no one has my back and no one's listening. I'm in between the bank and the Gaylord Hotel and no one's listening. Well, this story does have an ending. Unfortunately, this is just a tease. We aren't going to tell you what happens or how anyone could make a mistake like this in the first place. You'll have to wait until Denver 7 News at 10 and we'll see you there. Well, a million dollars will be spent on a fence for the state capitol. This is according to our partners at the Denver Post. They've seen the renderings and say the current plan is to put up a six-foot-tall black wrought iron fence around the capitol. Now, the building took a beating during the protests last year. Lawmakers appear somewhat divided over whether a fence is the best way of protecting it going forward. Well, the man arrested for murdering eight people in the Atlanta area told police his actions were not motivated by bias. And his actions indicate otherwise. Six of the eight victims were Asian women. And while we wait on investigators, what we can speak to is the fact that a lot of people in our Asian communities feel targeted right now, and rightly so. Now, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders have spent the last year hearing about the China virus or the Wuhan plague. They heard it from their neighbors who heard it from their president. So when eight people were murdered Tuesday night, sadly, it didn't feel so surprising. It hurts that it took this high profile type of crime for it suddenly to be national news that Asians do in fact still face racism. I know people have been spat on, they've been coughed on, they've been verbally harassed and they've been pushed. There's dozens and dozens of reports just amongst community leaders. We've been hearing a lot of things and we have this internal, um, we're starting to gather this internal list of incidences that are ranging 20, 25, 30 uh, of things that have been going on. 
And I'm sure a lot, of, a lot of you feel a need to help. Well, there are plenty of incredible local businesses you can support. You can also educate yourself on what these communities have been through over the last year. Otherwise, just listen when someone tells you what they're going through. It goes a long way. It's still a bit chilly out there, but warmer days are coming up as we head toward the weekend. Is it a broadening of the horizons? It's a good opportunity to try new things. An existential threat? The meat industry and the livestock industry as a whole has a deep history, present, and future in Colorado. Or a big, fat, juicy nothing burger. We don't take a position one way or another on it. Meat in, meat out day gets a 360 treatment after the break.